In part 5 of section 16, we're going to discuss in more detail the horizontal asymptote that oftentimes appears in a rational function. So definition 16.3 is going to indicate when a horizontal asymptote exists. Uh, it says here, let f be a rational function, then the line y equals b is a horizontal asymptote of your function. If the following conditions are satisfied. Y has to approach B as X approaches infinity or as X approaches negative infinity. So these two statements are essentially going to be um, your end behavior statements. They're the same kind of statements that we would have had for um, the end behavior of a polynomial saying X approaches infinity, X approaches negative infinity. But with the horizontal asymptote, we are not expecting the arrows to go up or down. We're expecting them to approach a particular value and they're gonna be approaching that horizontal boundary. So I wanna use some graphs as an example to help illustrate um, how we can find the horizontal asymptote. And then we'll discuss how an equation can be used to find the horizontal asymptote. And then of course, once we know that, then we can create the graph for ourselves. So example 16.8 is gonna give us a chance to, to get into this definition a little bit more. It says, uh, the graph of several functions is given. Find the horizontal asymptote of each function. So let's take a look at part A. And in part A, we have, uh, it looks like four arrows that are going off of the window here. One to the left, one to the right, one that's going up and one that's going down. Now the arrows that are going up and going going down, those are going to be the arrows that go with a vertical asymptote. And a lot of graphing softwares do not do a good job of illustrating vertical asymptotes because they're technically not part of the function. They're there as a way for us to visualize where there is a boundary um, or a break in the graph. It helps us to see the discontinuity. So I don't really wanna worry about the arrows that are going up and down. I wanna focus on the arrows that are associated with the, um, the right and the left hand side. So in other words, what is Y doing as X approaches infinity? And what is Y doing as X approaches negative infinity. Statement number one is associated with the arrow on the right. Statement number two is associated with this arrow on the left. Now, as I start to go further out to the right, I'm gonna to continue to decrease, but my decrease starts to slow down and it looks like it's reach, reaching a kind of a flattening point. Now it never actually gets completely flat, but it does start to approach a particular value. And it seems like it's gonna be getting closer and closer to uh, the line here at three. And so I would say that Y approaches three as X approaches infinity. Now in order for this to be a horizontal asymptote of a rational function, it needs to also be the boundary on the left hand side. So as I extend this horizontal asymptote to the left hand side, it definitely looks like arrow number two is also going to be getting closer and closer uh, to that particular boundary. So I would say y approaches three as x approaches negative infinity. And our definition says that if both of those um, statements are true, then that means we have a horizontal asymptote, I'll abbreviate that HA, at Y equals three. So we can use the graph as a way to estimate about where we think the horizontal asymptote is. Once we start looking at the equations, we'll be able to know exactly. But for now, this is a good introduction into uh, how to write a horizontal asymptote and how to recognize it on the graph. Part B. Uh, this graph has one, two, three, four, five, six arrows. 
and the only two arrows that I'm interested in are the ones that are going off to the right and to the left. And it definitely looks like they are reaching a, uh, a boundary. And it looks like the boundary works on both sides of the graph and it appears that it would be at negative three. So the horizontal asymptote for part B is going to be Y equals negative three. And then for part C, we'll do the same thing, but I want to focus specifically on just the arrow going off to the left and then the arrow that's going off here to the right. So to the left, it seems pretty clear that we're going to be getting closer and closer to the x-axis, which would be getting closer and closer to a value of zero, the y value of zero. And if I extend this all the way across the graph, will I have the same behavior happening over here on the very far right where the arrow is going off the window? And while it is very difficult to tell, let me erase some of what's here so we can see a little bit clearer. This curve, as we're going from left to right, it does dip below the x-axis and then it's going to start to come back up just a little bit here toward the end. And so as we go further out to the right, it is going to start to get closer and closer to the, uh, the x-axis there. And again, we're just doing an estimate here because we don't actually have the equation in front of us. We're having to use whatever the um, accuracy is from this graph. And so from the best that we can tell, there is going to be a horizontal asymptote uh, located at y equals zero.